Welcome to another product presentation from TIS. Today we're going to be looking at our new TIS EV Test 100, working in conjunction with our TIS MFT Pro. You'll see on the third page, we've now got the EVSE Test new icon. For those who have bought an MFT Pro and don't have the EVSE setting, TIS are doing that as a free of charge upgrade, either on a calibration day or if you get it to our office, We'll update that for you. The EV Test 100 uh, has a few features that are a little bit different from others on the market. Um, so first of all, it will simulate an electrical fault. Um, again, most other adapters will do that, but ours will actually simulate an earth fault. And with an earth fault, because the tyres are obviously rubber, the chassis could become live, and obviously it could be uh, a danger to the person who potentially touches that car. Ours is also CAT3 uh, at 300 volts, um, so it obviously a protection against transient voltages. It also, as you'll see, has got an optical lead going from the EV Test 100 to the MFT Pro, and that just allows both instruments to actually talk to each other to guide you through the auto sequence. So we talked about in the introduction um, the EVSE auto sequence. So what we're going to do now is take you through and show you how simple it is to use. So we click on the EVSE test icon and it's asking me to confirm which EV pod type of EV pod we've got installed. So if we click on there, it says single phase or three phase. Well, mine's a single phase. Ventilated or non-ventilated, mine's non-ventilated. And the supply from 13 amp to 63 amp and mine's actually a 20 amp supply so click on the 20 amp supply and tick the box and now it's ready to do the continuity test press go and it takes advantage of the colored screen on the mft pro and actually tells me here where i set my dials on my ev test 100 so it's asking me to set the pp state to nc it's asking me to set the cp state to a and the fault status to OK, which we've got all the dials set up ready. So once you've done that, tick the box, and it's now ready to actually perform the continuity test. The continuity test is done. It gives me a green thumbs up to tell me the result is good. We actually save the result, so it moves on to the next test on the sequence. So on the next sequence, it's an insulation test. And as you can see on the coloured screen again, it's asking me to check my dials. So the PP state set to NC, the CP state set to A, and the fault status set to OK. So on the EV test 100, we've got all the dials in the correct place for the insulation test. So we tick the box on the MFT Pro, and it's now ready to perform the test. Press go. Now perform the insulation test, gives me a thumbs up and the test is complete. So we press the save button and it now goes on to the next sequence. As you can see, it's asking me to set the PP to NC, the CP to A and the fault status to OK. And when that's done, we can tick the box. And what it's going to do now, it's going to make sure that the EV pod is not delivering any current because at the minute we're currently not plugged into the car so it doesn't want to deliver any charge and as you can see there it's confirmed that it's not sending a charge so that result is good and we can move on to the next status on the next sequence you can see again on the colored screen it's shown me a diagram of the EV pod and as you can see on the right hand side there it's asking for the CP state to be changed to B and the PP state to 20 amp and what this is doing it's simulating that the car is actually plugged in but it's not calling for a charge and what it shouldn't be able to do now is actually pull out the EV connection there and I can't that's now locked in so it's confirming that we now tick the box on the MFT Pro to say that we've checked that and it's now moved on to the next sequence. 
So as you can see on the next test, it's still asking for CP to be plugged into B and PP a dial to set to 20 amp, which it obviously is from the last sequence. So that is all good. And what this is simulating is that the car is plugged in, but it's not asking for a charge. But when it does ask for a charge, will it deliver the correct current? So we're looking for a current rating in that bottom right hand corner. So we tick the box automatically does the test and as you can see it'll deliver 19 amps which is good when the car obviously asks for that charge so we press the save button and move on to the next sequence as you can see now it's asking me to change the dial on the cp state to c so what it's simulating now is that the car is actually asking for a charge the pp is still at 20 amps and the fault status is set to OK. So we tick the box and say that we're ready to do the test. And as you can see now, it's delivering the voltage and it's delivering the correct current for the car to start charging. We save that and we move on to the next sequence. As you can see, it's, it's still asking for a charge as the car. It's still set to CP status C and PP 20 amp. But now it's asking me to put an earth fault which is a great feature of the EV test 100 so we change the fault status to PE we tick the box and it now performs the test with an earth fault and as you can see it's detected as an earth fault and it's not delivering any current to the car whatsoever so again a good test and we save and it moves on to the next one so the next test, it's asking me to simulate an electrical fault. So CP still at C, PP still at 20 amp. And now we move the dial onto an electrical fault. So my dials are in the correct place. I tick the box on the MFT Pro. And there you go. It's not delivering any charge to the car because it's picked up that it's got an electrical fault. We save that result. The next sequence is an earth loop impedance test without tripping any RCDs in the system. As you can see, PP state set to 20 amp, which it is. The CP set to C, and the fault status now back to OK, and we can hear the charger click in there and energize. So tick the button, and it's now ready to perform the loop test. And as you can see, it checks all four results on one screen. So your PSC, PFC, live to neutral and live to earth. There you go, it's not tripped any RCDs. It's giving me the results, give me a, a thumbs up and we can save that result and move on to the next test sequence. So the next test sequence is an RCD test type A at 30 milliamp. So as you can see on the coloured screen again, PP set to 20 amp, CP set to C, and the fault status set to A, OK on the EV test 100, and it's all good. We tick the box on the MFT Pro, and it's ready to perform at 30 milliamp type A, as it says there. Press the go button. As you can see there, it's tripped the RCD. 7.5 milliamps and at 96 milliseconds. Save the result. The tester now warns me to obviously reset the RCD. So we need to reset the EV test 100 back to A. And then I'm going to go to the RCD and reset the RCD. So we've done that. So we tick the box. We need to move the CP state back to C, still at 20 amp and still at status OK. And now it's going to perform an RCD test type B, so DC sensitive at 6 milliamps. Tick the box on the MFT Pro and it shows you on there that it's ready to do the 6 milliamp DC test. Press go. And you can see it's come out at 2.4 milliamps at 70 milliseconds, so the RCD test is correct and we save the result and as you can see there now it says end of EVSE and all my results are now stored on the MFT Pro.
Thanks for watching.